Chase Bays, this is Brian Leonard, this is Dustin, <laughs> this is a beautiful FC over here, Chase McMaster, we're going to talk about going to uh, manual brakes, so. too nervous it's like well I know yeah, I mean a car a car makes you feel nervous yeah like I've gotten in cars that have like in a, like in a drift car for instance it has too much grip for the power that I have gotcha and that car feels sketchy yeah like I don't feel comfortable manging I don't feel comfortable slowing yeah. down like everything about it but when you get in a car that's set up right dude you're, you're no longer like drive. yeah you're no longer like whipping out of the turns and stuff Correct. like that you're that's a, that's a great example yeah just because um so, yeah, so driver confidence is almost more important than like anything, right? Right. So, so what well, gets you confidence? So how do you get driver confidence, right? right. What the one thing that I find on road racing, or, or even track days, the one thing people screw up the most is braking. Yeah. That's the worst thing. People, you can accelerate fine. People, they have good car control skills. They'll come mid corner and exit. They'll get a little sideways and whatnot. But when it comes time to brake, they're either too late and having you know having well, yeah, over they're breaking the into the turn. Yeah, they're like or they're like breaking too early. They're just the braking is not consistent. The guys that I coach, as soon as we get the braking consistent, you can watch their lap times skyrocket immediately, right. having changed nothing else. Hmm. But a lot of that is having the right equipment, like you said. So manual brakes on all of our high horsepower cars. I mean I had a guy that had never driven one before, drove eight hundred, we had an eight hundred and fifty horsepower sequential Bosch Motorsport ABS manual braking conversion, bunch of aero, and the guy, like, he drives a car and was just like, dude, I cannot believe that. I want every car I own, I want it to feel like that. Right. Yeah, like, I, I get in my stock car and the brakes are so touchy. Yeah. It makes me mad. Like, one of the, like, it's so bad. It's a 335. Yeah. Like, it is awful. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll even, like, even, like, inching forward, I'm like. Well, that's what, when you get used. But they, they, they I, I know that they made it that way because most of the people that drive the cars exactly. are, like, soccer moms, and they need that, like, yeah, you know, even if it's not comfortable, even if they're doing this, the car's slowing down. Yeah, it's dummy proof. Well, and the thing, man, I'm not saying soccer moms are dumb. Well, but <laughs> but like, so the thing is this: if they'll you're run into you in though. This industry, if you're even in this industry, yes. you should be wanting to go faster or wanting to do something better, right? Yeah. Like, why are you even building a car? Why are you even driving a car on a track, drifting, road racing, autocrossing? Why are you even doing any of this if you don't? So, I mean, a brake booster is almost like a creature comfort. I mean, it's awesome. almost like having air conditioning, which you're not worried about while you're racing. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and, and so get rid of the, just well, and if you know put your foot into it if you have to, Yeah. you I know, mean, and it's only mar a marginal amount. So, and the thing so, is this, and for what we're doing, which I can't speak for drifting because I don't know anything about it, but what we're doing, you should be able to lock the tires up. Like you should be able to lock all four tires up. If you can't, you've done something wrong. Right. right with manual brakes with a manual absolutely brake. And, and you should be able to do it with ease exactly yeah so that's the point so people the the whole reason why you do it is what makes people nervous so the main thing is, is like just suck less like just just like literally take the time to learn like just take the time to really think about it go through it and then go oh my god this makes sense because if you will do it right you will be much much faster yeah i mean if you know that something is better yes and, and you, you don't believe it, or, or you haven't personally experienced it, but you know that everybody says that this is better. The fastest people, the, the best you know, drifters, all this stuff, I'm just not comfortable. Then you just need to take the, take the yes. leap of faith, even if it doesn't feel good for the first day. Yes. Because it's, it's not going to feel good. It's, it's different. But, you've been used to something for however many years yeah. you've been driving, but as soon as you, you get into it, it's going to be better. Well, so at one point in time, no one here knew how to drive a manual, right? That's but true. you took the effort and time to learn. 
right? Yeah. So then it's like, okay, now I can drive a manual, but I can't heel toe. Then you took the time, you learned how to do it. Why is this different? That's right. I mean, why is this any different? You learn how to drive faster, you learn how to modify parts. This is no different. It's, it's just it's just a little bit more effort. Put the effort into it, and it will pay huge yes. dividends. And 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 then find the right people to help you set it yes. up. Don't don't do trial and error on, on your own because people, people have, done have already done it. Done it. Yeah, like, pulling like, your call pulling us, your call him. Yeah. pulling your vacuum line is not a manual brake system, right? No, it's oh, like, absolutely not. That's going to be that ten times time. worse. That's probably where the rumor time. starts, right? Yeah. That's yeah. where that's where the rumor is starting. I think so, and I think I think that. Um, a lot of drag race people switch to manual brakes just to simplify or to only have front brakes since they yeah. have, you know, like we'll just say front wheel drive harder yeah. guys. And they're like, well, I want, I want the car stopped. So I'm going to put, you know, inch and a half, uh, mm -hmm. four master cylinder, absolute nightmare. Like you can't yeah. stop that car. It feels like against a brick wall. And then you have people who have experiment, who have experimented with different setups and track tested and done, you know, pressure testing like us. That's what we do. And I know that he's done it too. And that's, that's where you know, at least our little niche of the industry that's outside of racing, that's when it was like, okay, this is good. And everybody who buys our product and sets it up right loves it. Um, there's just always, there's, we got to educate those people who still think that it's bad. And that's literally all it is though, is educating people on what it is. Because yeah. it's, if you, you always look to the standard, like if you just look, okay, what are these people doing? What is the best of the best doing in whatever, whatever industry you are, you're always looking at Apple, these people, that people, that's how to do it, right? Well, so. Does Formula of, One use manual brakes? Uh, yeah, so they're. Well, little, there you go, right? Well, they're, they're, they do, but they're a little bit different. They're. Whole, yeah, they, I know that they've tested like off and on like power brakes and they've tested, they've tested they've all tested kinds of variations. everything under but the, the cars, Well, you said most of the IMSA cars are, if not all of them, oh, right? Oh, absolutely. You cannot, if you look at the DPI cars in the prototype category, every one of them, manual brakes. Um, they run, you know, dual master cylinders with a balance bar, whatever. You've got um, all GT3 cars. Just Google, literally just go to Google Images and Google 911 GT3 uh, RSR race car um, interior. The second you look at the pedals, what are you going to see? Manual brakes. And F1 doesn't, they, they do, or they do use manual brakes. Yes. There's just different factors involved because there's aero and yes. a lot of stuff. But I mean, that should be, that should, yeah, like you said, that should be yeah, evidence mm -hmm. that this is. You know, they're using a different kind of setup to cap. It's yeah. literally the fastest race cars in the world. Yeah. So if you look at a GT-based car, right? So because you, you know, in theory, you could go to the showroom floor and buy a brand new Porsche, buy this, buy that, right? And you look at like the GT3 cars or GT4 cars. You got Pratt Miller's Z28Rs. You've got, uh, or yeah, Z28 GT4Rs, the Cayman GT4s, um, Mustangs, all those guys in the GT4 category, the BMWs, like they're running a manual brake and they took a stock vehicle and built a GT4 race car the factories do and the, one of the things that they do the braking systems is run a manual brake why if it sucked why would they do it yeah and 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 people are in those cars so much and like blistering 24, heat, hour 24 hours if it was like pushing your foot against a brick wall or if it was like you had to do leg day dude you're I mean you you're, couldn't do it you, you would fatigue the driver you'd and get you, yeah your you foot just, would just shake and you wouldn't be able to drive absolutely so it's, it's just and I've personally driven these cars and I would tell you right now if you were to say give me a Corvette give me a bone stock C7 Z06 with and without a manual braking conversion I'm going with a manual braking conversion and having changed nothing else like yeah. in my perfect world the perfect HVDE car would be like because I like you know horsepower like Corvettes I think would be like any any car with decent pads, you know, uh, good brake fluid, like buy some nice stuff, and like cash or SRF or something like that, um, and a manual braking conversion, dude, you're fast. Like that's that money spent there and on coaching uh, is like best money you can spend. Because I mean, you could spend all this stupid money elsewhere trying to do all this other stuff, and that's what they do. They neglect that. Yeah, and then once they go to that, they're like, I want it on every other client. I want it on every car I own. I was like, well, you can't do it with the Miata, you have to run, you know, the factory stuff. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. Tell me about it, because when I ever time I drive one, I'm like, oh my gosh, if we had a manual brake, this car is two seconds fast. Probably because I know. Oh, of course. But it's, it's supposed so, to be called standards. Again, you know, it's kind of funny how these rumors get started. I mean, you go and post on the forum about what you're doing to the car, and suggesting moving to a manual brake because it was recommended by a pro driver. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, people that are bench racing behind the computer going, 
dude, you're going to crash the car and you're going to wreck it. You need to rethink it. And it's just funny to me. I mean, you've got so many different types of people, right? I mean, that was what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think um, well, we, we've definitely covered it. I mean, you've you got to yeah. do what the, the fastest people are doing. And, and yeah, they're, they're, they're totally bench racers. And, and um, I'll say this. We've, we've probably sold. We've, prob we've been making a, a manual brake booster for, God, nearly 10 years. It's, I think 2010 is when we first released it. And... I'll say this, and there might be people who come out of the woodworks, and I'll, I'll just say this. If, if a customer sets it up right, and they, they do everything that we tell them to, with the pads and the bias valve and, and the right master cylinder size, which we handle, you know, everything there except for the pads, they love it. And, and it is so rare. I'm, I'm to the point now where if one of my employees tells me that a customer is not happy with their pedal fill. I'm like something's wrong. So try it before you knock it. That's right. But do it right. Yeah, like, and, and do it right. And and you and know you come should. to these guys because they know how to set it up. I mean, one of the things that you asked me was what diameter pistons pistons are you running? You know what what is the setup on your new front brakes and you know what are you guys trying to do? What kind of pads are you going to run? I mean, there's a lot of questions being asked because you're going in and you're making the calculation to decide the right size master cylinder that's going to deliver just enough fluid to give you the pressure that you're looking for without being too stiff and requiring leg day. Yeah. I mean, so there's a lot more that goes into it than most people think about or, and, and they don't even realize that the due diligence is there. So yeah, I mean, we've, we've done all the hard yeah. work. This is, it's all news. That's the thing. It, it really me, is. It drives me crazy. Cause, cause like, yeah, there's categories. There's people who are bench racers and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, like they're just going off of what they heard. Well, you got to have them and in the world. You got to have. It them. makes it interesting. And then you've got <laughs> you've got the people who are like, they're like simple. They're like just throw this on it or this on it, and you're good. You'll you'll go you'll go fast. And then you know they learn a little bit, but that doesn't mean that they're that they're like knowledgeable that they're engineers or designers. Um, and then you've got basically anybody past that is people who have. Who have invested into the setup and they've tried different things or they've listened to other people and everything from there is like the myths just fall off and, and manual braking is not good. We live, we're in an industry where there's way too much misinformation, but just since we're focusing on this one, everybody past that point is like, I'm good with manual brakes yeah. because, you know, they're they're setup people. You know, they're they they've gotten past the point where they listening to they're, where they're like listening to rumors. They're listening to the people that are going fast. They're listening to people that are putting out the most smoke and drifting or whatever, and and that's it. I mean, it's, and then it's they never sure. And they it's not even a conversation in, in like deep road racing. No, you're not, not like do you run manual brakes? It's like it's like it's, it's like of course, even, right? Well, no, it's, it's not even a conversation. It's, it's like such the, the the guy changing the tire at an IMSA event knows that. Right, like the, the guys literally slinging the tire, and the kid that's sweeping the floor and cleaning up the shop at night, and the IMSA. I mean, they know that it's yeah. not even, it's not a question. You it's know, a weird they, divide. Okay, it really is. Well, I hope. I hope well, this interesting video. perspective. So now we're, you know, this is the real perspective. This oh, is coming from racing and engineering. The the experts, not the, the form gurus. So. We're actually gonna send. <laughs> that's where I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're going to. Yeah, we're going to send this thing. So let's check out the product then, huh? Okay. So I'm going to show you guys what we're giving to David uh, today. So this is, um, there's two brake booster eliminators here. Um, one is a dual piston, dual reservoir. This is actually unreleased, but we're letting David test it out. Um, and then this is a single piston, single reservoir. Uh, the, the pedal fill is identical between these two if the bore size is the same. The major difference is that if you lose a brake line in the front, you have a whole reservoir that will stop the rear, and you know vice versa. Um, we've I've always run singles, and we always have really good secured brake lines, and we trust them. And you know, tens of thousands of people run this, and it's good. But there, I understand the the separation between these two. Just know that soon we'll have an option for both. Of course, it'll be double the price. Um, and just a side note, a lot of the OE master cylinders aren't chambered inside the reservoir. So if you lose a brake line, you lose them both of them because it doesn't separate the two. So there's actually no difference between a lot of stock master cylinders and this. Um, just something noteworthy. This is our bias valve uh, and then the hard line. This actually bolts to the bottom of this. 
and the hard line goes from here to here. Um, and then it separates, it separates uh, front right, front left, and then this is the out, obviously. And so this can just produce a reduction of 40% to 90%, um, which maybe it's kind of, it's kind of uh, complicated. Maybe you can just throw it in the comment section or something, David. Um, but yeah, this just this just separate. This just uh, gives less pressure to the rear. You don't want the same amount of pressure, obviously, because of the weight difference. Um, but this is very important for manual brakes. Uh, a lot of people want to use a stock proportioning valve. It is not smart. Don't do it. That is made for a booster setup. Just use this. And you can get all this stuff on the site, except for the uh, dual, which should be out in about a month, depending on when you're watching this video. Here's the retaining bolts. And then here's the three brake lines. This is driver, passenger, and then rear. And this replaces all of the lines in the engine bay. The front ones go up to the caliper lines, which are the ones that connect to the caliper and then go to the bracket and your fender well. And then the rear line uh, on these kits goes up to where the rear hard line enters the firewall. So there'll be a, there'll be a separation point. Every car has it. Um, it goes up to that splitting point. Um, if you have any confusion, we have installed photos on the site, and of course David will probably document where everything goes. So that's that's it. This is as long as you size your master cylinder right, you got a bias valve, and you have the the brake pads that we have talked about, um, just kind of a street track compound or better, depending on what your use is. This is what it takes to get a good braking fill. But you just have to make sure the master cylinder size is right, which is what we handle.